Now you might think that it's a little late to be unboxing a GTX 570, but this one has a bit of a twist that um, you guys might find interesting, who knows? So this is the Galaxy MDT GTX 570. It's got 1280 megs of RAM, just like most GTX 570s. It's got a test form inside, which is not actually for you guys, but rather for my use. Uh, it has some foam, it has wind split settings. So this is interesting, but we'll get into more about that a little bit later. It also has the MDT series exclusive software settings guide, which is also interesting, but we'll get into that a little bit more later. Graphics card driver, and then wind split revolution software installation disc. This you might actually need, although you should download the latest, if available, from Galaxy website. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what we got for adapters. We got a DVI to VGA. We've got a mini HDMI to HDMI. These are gold-plated. This, uh, well, the HDMI one is. This one's not. The HDMI one is a gold-plated adapter, though. It's kind of nice. Little extras go a long way. So we've got dual Molex to PCIe 8 pin, and then we've got dual Molex to PCIe 6 pin, just in case you don't have the appropriate PCI Express slots on your or slots connectors on your power supply although if you're still using a power supply that's only got molex connectors to plug into your graphics card it's probably time to think about upgrading anywho so let's go ahead and get this opened up and i will get into what is very interesting about this particular video card so the 570 is still by all rights a high performance graphics card but it's always had a bit of a disadvantage in the market compared to its competition from AMD. And that is that the GTX 570 has never supported more than two displays out at a time for surround gaming, unless you buy two of them. So how did Galaxy see fit to address this? Well, check this out. They put four DVI connectors, one mini HDMI as well, although that's less relevant, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. Four DVI connectors on this card, making it capable of driving up to three displays in surround plus an additional monitor, which is very, very cool. I mean, I, I, I suppose you could run four displays at a time, but that wouldn't be very beneficial because you'd have a bezel like right in the middle. So this is a gaming card. It's intended for gaming, so I'm going to go ahead and say that I think the intended use is probably for three displays at 1080p in a surround gaming mode. So how they achieved this? Well, one, they have a custom designed card. So you can see this is a completely non-reference card with four DVI connectors on it, as well as an aftermarket cooler. So here, there you go. You guys can have a look at the cooler. So it's got an 80 millimeter fan and a very beefy and very heavy heat sink going on here. So check this out. We've got one, two heat pipes, three heat pipes. It's hard to kind of see those in there. Uh, how many heat pipes do we have total? Can you see in there? Four heat pipes total? I think it's four heat pipes total. Yeah. Yeah, so four heat pipes total, including... Uh, so two coming out to the left here, or to the right, and then two coming out to the left. Very dense aluminum fin array on both sides, as well as a downward draft fan that is actually very cleverly positioned because it's almost directly over the PWM. So while we can use these heat pipes that are positioned directly above the GPU to distribute that heat to the rest of the fins, we use the fan's direct cooling in order to keep the voltage regulators cool enough. So that's pretty much it for that part of the card. So let's get back to the display. So you have a couple different options. You can run them normally. So you can see there's DVI-I, DVI-D1, DVI-D2, and DVI-D3. You can either run <clears throat> two DVI's, three DVI's, two DVI's and an HDMI, or you can run four DVI's or three DVI's and an HDMI. And I'll be back in a sec. So there's a fair bit of hocus pocus that is going on with this particular graphics card. So in order to achieve the whole triple monitor gaming thing, because really that's how many monitors you can span a single virtual display, much like the way Ifinity works, we've got these numbered ones. So we've got DVI-D1, 2, and 3. And these guys are only good up to 1920 by 1080 if you're running three at a time. So bear that in mind. 1080p monitors are the most you're going to be able to do triple displays on. However, it should be noted that with a GTX 570 level graphics card, unless you're running more than one card, 
you're probably only going to want three 1080p monitors anyway. You're not going to run three 30 inches off something like this. Okay, so you either run two displays plus one, which runs off either of these, or you run three displays plus one that runs off either of these. So this is great for, I used to play a fair bit of Supreme Commander, so if I wanted to run triple monitor and then have my mini map displayed on an additional one, that is how I would do it, because Supreme Commander was multi-display capable. Whereas if you have a game like Race Driver Grid, you would only be able to run it off one monitor and then you might be able to have like Task Manager or whatever displayed. It depends on whether the game is multi-display compatible or not. So these guys create one virtual display, these guys are a secondary monitor. So I hope that that's clear. Now Galaxy does provide a couple pieces of software, the, both the wind split as well as the easy easy Y, easy Y display software settings, so you can use that in order to configure everything properly because it's not built into the GeForce driver. This is a Galaxy exclusive technology, which is one of the reasons, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but this is the first time I've ever looked at a Galaxy card, but this is one of the reasons why I think this one is so neat, because unlike any other GeForce card other than the GTX 590, which is kind of cheating because it has two GPUs on it to achieve its surround gaming glory, this one supports surround, so it is a direct competitor, and it is completely feature competitive against any AMD card, because not only does it have 3D vision and all that good stuff, it also has iFinity, which I don't know what to call it. I mean, we'll call it NVIDIA Surround, I guess, because that's what it's called when you have two cards, but it's got it on a single card. So since I've never talked about Galaxy before, I should probably mention a couple other things. So they've got 24-7, 365 tech support for US and Canada only. I don't know about other territories, guys. Extreme Tuner HD, so they've got some overclocking software. They also have a one-click easy Y buttons, ultra simple multi-display window management. So that's that software that they included. And then they've also got a couple of other cool things. So they've got a dual BIOS. We're used to seeing these on motherboards now, but it's not that often we see it on graphics cards. AMD has started doing it on some of their cards on the very high end. But here we go, there's Galaxy adding it to uh, NVIDIA cards when no one else has it. Power meter allows you to monitor the entire card's status and power consumption and voltage settings. So for full control for extreme overclockers. I don't know how many extreme overclockers are going to need a card like this because they aren't typically running four displays at a time. But there you go, I guess the options are there. So thank you for checking out this unboxing and first look at the in ah, <laughs> NVIDIA, well it is NVIDIA, NVIDIA Galaxy GeForce GTX 570 MDT with multi-display technology. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.